guys, thank you very much for having us. Uh, John, Sid, Alex, and I, we are the gang that is behind SharePoint Framework and Adaptive Card Extensions and Viva Connections. For people that don't know what SharePoint Framework is, uh, basically a way for extend Microsoft 365 canvases using uh, living technologies like JavaScript and TypeScript and hosting your solution in Microsoft 365. We started this journey for as a way to extend SharePoint pages with web parts and extensions. And the more our product grew, the more we were able to target additional canvases. We then worked with Microsoft Teams as personal apps and Teams tabs. And we recently, we are now working with the Viva Connection dashboard and the ability to use SharePoint Framework to build card and quick view uh, using basically the same technology. So this is kind of the evolution of SharePoint Framework. This slide is interesting because now you can see that you can use a single technology and potentially a single solution and by basically simply tweaking the manifest and building your logic, you can target all of these canvases with one single package, one single code base. I, I think adding to what Luca is saying, um, for folks unfamiliar with SharePoint Framework, it really enables you to use, um, again, industry standard tooling to be able to host and run your code from SharePoint and targeting all of our different experiences um, like Teams, Connections, um, and SharePoint. And you, do not, and you don't have to be a SharePoint expert, which is nothing wrong with that, but basically, the entry point of starting adopting SharePoint framework is just like it. As long as you can work with any web API, is basically you can work with SharePoint framework. So as Veza was saying at the beginning of the call, we recently uh, released 1.14. 1.14 provided some kind of a, a new functionalities and capabilities, specifically around some of the issues that we have we fixed it. very recently on GitHub. You can see the list on the link provided below. And then we had some kind of uh, important updates on web parts and list your command sets. Uh, most importantly, we also added a new template based for the ability to, uh, when you do a scaffolding with Yeoman, we first off uh, had a cleaner experience. We are asking less questions. We are being more streamlined. And then we are also providing some kind of new updates for and templates for being able to surface in other canvas than SharePoint. So for example, for Teams, and being able to integrate better with Teams. So that's what happened in 1.14. We also have some kind of beta, beta features and capabilities over there. They do not show up in 1.14 release because now we have this new way of release updates on SharePoint Framework, where every time we release something in GA, we are also releasing something on um, as a beta functionalities and capabilities. Uh, so if you go to the next slide, there is a question around the React. In 115, we are doing some kind of work to be able to uh, have some new functionalities and capabilities. So as a 115 beta release, which is uh, coming very, very soon, you will have the beta functionalities that were available in 114 beta. So you will have card view caching for adaptive card extensions. You will have the ability to use uh, the new media and geolocation capabilities. Some of these things will surface in demo today. You will able to have a new error handle method to be able to do, have a better error management and error experience in your card when you're developing your card for Viva Connection dashboard. And then as we are progressing in new beta releases and we are going close to GA, we will start introducing new capabilities that will surface in 115. So the first thing that we are going to work with is the ability to have isolated functionalities and capabilities in cards, similar to what we have with web part today. You will be able to have isolated adaptive card extension that will give you the ability to target specific APIs that require extra amount of security or extra amount of um, elevated access. Elevated is the wrong word because you're not elevating, but extra access um, considered to everything else. You will be able to do that in a protected way, meaning that everything else will not be able to have access to the same kind of scopes. We will then move to GA the caching, and hopefully we want to move to the GA also the uh, geolocation and media. Uh, we will also do some kind of tweaks on the Teams integration. One of the things that we are doing in Teams today, we are not using the on behalf of flow on Teams web. So we are normalizing that experience so that everything that will surface around Teams will use the same flow in terms of gathering tokens to access APIs. Uh, we are going also to do some kind of new ext extensions for list and library forms. Uh, Alex is going to demo that very soon, so I'm not going to say anything because I don't want to do any spoiler alerts. And then I'm not demoing today. 
Yeah, I'm not demoing him to today. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, my bad. I think it was. But uh, no, he's demoing something else. But um, like uh, Luca's saying, it, it's coming. I think that answers uh, Russell's question um, in the chat as well. Right. Okay. Sorry. My bad. Uh, not too much coffee yet. Uh, then we are aligning on the uh, libraries, capability and availability. We are aligning on Graph SDK 3, TypeScript V4, Node 16, and we are adopting the SDK uh, version 11 of SDK of Teams SDK. And then one of the things that we are working, uh, oh, another small things, but important things that we want to do is to align the API registration to the app acquisition flow. What I mean by that is that today when you are installing an SPFX component that requires an API that is not registered to the tenant, let's say a multi tenant API, you need to do manually an extra step to do that. We are streamlining that capability by being able to register the service principal of your multi-tenant API when you deploy the package so that now you don't have to do anything else and we are aligning to what the Teams experience also is for accessing APIs in Teams. And then one of the things that we are working very, very hard is the ability to have adaptive card extensions, card view, and quick views powered by bots. The scenario here is that you already have your bot, you built your bot for Microsoft Teams, you maybe wanted to have your adaptive card powered bots for uh, Teams tabs, and you also want to use the same capabilities and technology in Viva. So one of the things that we are doing, we are extending and adopting that model by using adaptive card universal actions and being able to have bots that can basically speak Viva and being able to have these bots sending information to, to the dashboard and basically building card views and quick views. Uh, there is no commitment on when we are planning to ship the feature. Trust us guys, we're working very, very hard to do that, but just like anything that is connected with multiple components, it's hard, but we're working on that. Yeah, I think um, to kind of add based off of the roadmap you can see here is that you know, we started the journey with 1.13 where we started doing different versions of the 1.13 uh, or the SPFX releases in terms of doing betas and release candidates. And so as we sort, sort of um, work on these features and we think that they're ready for broader consumption, um, we'll have them as part of our beta releases and we'll make um, announcements for them. And so I encourage you all to um, download them, test them, use them, give us feedback. I think that's the most important part, especially when they're still in beta to allow us to, to iterate um, and so it's going to be uh, a really great journey getting going to, to 115, and there's a lot there. So I'm really, really excited. Yeah, so in uh, 114, we were working hardly to improve the API of uh, common sets. So uh, previously, the API was pretty weak, and uh, sometimes uh, it was not exactly what developer wanted it to be third-party developers. So we have updated list view accessor class uh, to provide a lot of information about uh, the current list, current view uh, filters and uh, sorting applied by the user, like the client side. Uh, we have also introduced the new list view state changed event that you can handle. Uh, it will show you previous state and what exactly was happened. Uh, with the uh, list view, so you kind of can have this information, analyze it, and react on that. And how you can react, there is a new raison change uh, method that you can use that allows you to asynchronously react on any update. So, for example, you can, uh, up when the user clicks button, you uh, have some logic in on execute, some async logic, then you call rise and change, and that, that leads to updates in the list view or in your command set. And that's basically what I want to show in the demo. So let me actually uh, try to share my screen. So here is my demo command here. As you can see, it's like a standard command. I just scaffolded it from the uh, yeoman. So now if I do some new item in here, the item is added and we will wait a few seconds here. So it's a synchronous operation. And now you can see, first of all, it's disabled. This is a new property of the command and it has been updated after five seconds. So basically uh, our command or our command set reacted asynchronously on the changes in the view and why it's called now items changed because we knew that basically new item has been added to this list. And uh, from the code perspective, it's pretty simple. So in uh, our command set, 
I'm using list view, list view state changed event, and in the list state change event, a list view state change event, I'm uh, checking the state changes if rows has been changed. I'm just adding the handler to this list view state changed event. Uh, inside the handler, I'm checking the state changes, which is basically an uh, enum that provides us information what exactly has been changed. And in our case, if rows has been changed, in that case, I'm adding timeout and uh, inside the timeout, so it's kind of asynchronous operation in, in that case, uh, I'm changing the title of the command disabled and then I'm calling this raise and change, and basically after five seconds, our command is changing in the toolbar, which is pretty excited, I believe. And uh, that's the demo. Luca, back to you. Thanks, Alex. That was awesome. Uh, Sid, would you like to demo um, the the next thing? No spoilers. <laughs> yeah, sure. Thanks, John. Um, so. Folks, today I'm going to be demoing the uh, select media capabilities in mobile. Uh, so just let me quickly share my screen. And uh, so there is this new action, which we call the Viva action dot select media, which provides media capabilities on, on your adaptive card extensions. So here, as you can see, there is this. I'm, I'm actually projecting my phone onto the screen and here we have come up with a mock-up card for media upload and uh, I'm just going to tap onto it and quickly show you what happens. So this is a mock-up mock card that has been created. So when you open it, uh, we have hooked the Viva Action .select media capability on this upload button. So as soon as you click it, it opens your camera on your phone and you can click any photo of your choice and then you can uh, do any sort of image transformations on top of it if you want to. Um, and then press done. And that will automatically show up on the on the card. And this like uh, what happens is that when you submit it, the image and all the payload is passed to the on action handler. And then the third party developer can figure out what they want to do. So in this case, the third party dev took the name, the file size, and the thumbnail and presented it back onto the card itself. You can add multiple images. So the previous one, I took a photo. In the next, I can actually pick up something from the image gallery. So here I have a receipt that I want to upload. I can do that. And the same can be seen over here. If I want, I can remove individual images. And just for the purpose of this card, we have kind of expose these uh, settings, but you can decide whether you want to, what is the maximum file size that you want to, want, that you want your users to upload or whether you want them to upload multiple file images or not. But let's say that you reduce it down to say 102 bytes and you save the setting and you go back. Then in that particular case, the size of this image that I had already, uh, that I had already shared was way too large than 102. In that particular case, the on error callback gets invoked that the third party developer can latch onto, and then they can show the appropriate message saying that the file size is too large. So yeah, those were the uh, capabilities that we are trying to provide as part of the select media action. Yeah, that's my demo. Awesome, thanks, Sid. I'm also uh, super excited to say that, um, you know, this was previously only available um, on desktop in the previous uh, 1.14 beta releases, um, but as of this week or as of this call, uh, it's now available um, to be used uh, within uh, mobile worldwide um, as part of the beta. And so um, you can start playing around with that functionality um, today with the, uh, Viva Connections mobile. Yep. Excellent. Thanks, John. And I want to recap just the use case because I'm going to show my, my phone in here. Again, if you think about the Viva Connection mobile, it is your company's own portal, a mobile portal. And for there, <clears throat> you can then include these ACE cards. And in those ACE cards, you can now start operating with the actual device. And that's really the idea here. So those people who, let's say, take screenshots out of the, the the, let's say inventory uh, on the shops and all of that, they can easily access that directly from the ACE, directly from the company uh, mobile portal, uh, which is 
available in the in the mobile and then they can access the information like the cameras and location and all of that stuff in the future so that's where all of that is coming from now and, and just to add on to what Vesa just said like i mean yeah. um Another use case would be just to upload your vaccination cards, right? Like now that we are moving, uh, all of us are gradually moving into our offices. We are uh, asked to share our vaccination reports. So the same thing could be used over there and for many other frontline worker scenarios. Yep. So rather than being forced to implement your full uh, independent mobile application, you implement that uh, that mobile experience using SPFX, and then it will be rendered uh, in the mobile of Viva Connection. So, and sure for those in this call who are super familiar with Power um, Apps, yes, you can do similar kind of things with Power Apps, but then Power Apps, are not, it's low code, no code, rather than SPFX, which is pro developer code implementation. So you can access more efficiently other areas as well. But again, matter of opinion, matter of requirements, uh, which implementation style always the customers take. Uh, we in SPFX side, we of course promote SPFX model, but it depends on a customer case, right? But I guess, John, Luca, just double checking, I guess we went through all of the topics and we can jump on SEP. I can see Alex yep. nodding. Excellent, thank you, cool. Thank you.